Hello and welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano. On today's program, we'll get all the details about this year's Quincy Pride Festival. It's coming up this Sunday in Quincy Center this year. First, though, as always, we check out the weather and the news for you. Currently in Quincy, some hazy sunshine. It's already 81 degrees out there. Very summer-like day today with hazy sunshine, hot and humid with a high in the mid, maybe even upper 80s. Look out for some afternoon and even Evening thunderstorms, that's going to cool us off big time. Starting tonight, temperatures drop into the mid-50s, and we step back into early April this weekend with uh, showers and windy conditions tomorrow. Rather raw with highs only in the mid-50s. Kind of the same thing on Sunday. Showers, some steadier rain later in the day. Sunday's highs again only in the mid-50s. A little better on Monday with some... Uh, Sunshine, but still a chance for some showers. Highs in the mid 60s looks kind of unsettled for most of next week. So enjoy today again. Right now, hazy sunshine, 81 degrees in Quincy. Checking news for you today. Compass Medical Center is telling its patients that they will have access to their medical records and prescription refills. After abruptly closing all six of their locations in southeastern Massachusetts this past Wednesday, Compass shut down without warning its 100,000 patients or 500 employees. Compass owes Steward Healthcare $16 million after a judge last year found that Compass defrauded Steward. State Representative Tacky Chan of Quincy says although Compass is a private for profit medical group not licensed by the state, they could be in violation of a federal law that requires employers to notify workers 60 days before closing. I don't know what's going on. Um, I'll be watching the news and uh, wait for wait for DPH to uh, get to the delegation some more information on what's happening. I'm sure many customers are now in a lurch. Um, very concerning, uh, but uh, again, I don't. I think people should not construe this as a universal problem. They defrauded Stewart. Now, the governor and the attorney general say they are looking into the Compass closure. Compass has locations in Quincy, Braintree, Easton, East Bridgewater, Middleborough, and Taunton. Quincy Mayor Thomas Koch says that his proposal to raise the salaries of eight department heads and other appointees will help the city retain and attract new employees. The mayor is proposing to increase the salaries of department heads, including the police and fire chiefs, DPW commissioner, public buildings commissioner, and others in an effort to remain competitive. He says that surrounding communities are paying more than Quincy. So make it more competitive. I, I do believe, you know, most of our department heads love the city, love what they do, and uh, have taken a hometown discount, and that's okay. But, uh, you know, the reality is they are professionals. Uh, they do deserve to be receiving a salary that really um, reflects the, the job they do, and certainly it compares to other cities and um, districts and towns or whatever it may be. I mean, um, there are, um, I'll give you an example, is Town managers, uh, they're up in the 200s when you see mayors in the 130s, 150s, 160s. Um, I, I would say that the police and fire chiefs are probably uh, very competitive, but uh, a number of the others uh, were way low. City Council placed a hold on the proposed salary increases pending further discussion during a special meeting that will happen on June 12th. The remainder of the proposed city budget for next year was approved earlier this week. A Quincy man is facing charges of being the ringleader of a pretty major drug trafficking operation. Police say 35-year-old Stephen Marsden was running that cocaine distribution operation out of his Cove Way apartment. Police executed a search warrant there last Friday. They found five guns, dozens of edibles, pills, and a money-counting device. Officers also raided a Worcester apartment of Marsden's accomplice, and there they seized over 50 pounds of marijuana, cocaine, mushrooms, over $50,000 in cash, and hundreds of vape cartridges. Police also searched an office that Marsden was renting in Fall River. 
and found ghost guns, edibles, and an ATM machine. Marsden faces charges in Quincy District Court. His accomplice will be arraigned in Worcester. Officials say Marsden was buying cocaine from Puerto Rico. Last Friday's three alarm fire at a Quincy apartment building was sparked by an overheated computer. Fire Chief Joe Jackson says a computer that was plugged in and charging started this fire at a fourth floor unit of the 42 unit building on Willard Street. One resident did suffer some serious burns. At least 50 people were displaced by the blaze. Two firefighters were also treated for heat exhaustion. Fire burned right through the roof and caused extensive damage to one side of the building. Quincy Mayor Thomas Koch says the city used some funds from the Affordable Housing Trust to pay for temporary shelter for some of the fire victims, and the Red Cross also assisted. Quincy firefighters recently raised over $8,000 for Alzheimer's disease research through two separate fundraisers. $7,400 was raised during the sixth annual Bowlathon at Olindy's Lanes in Quincy, and another $1,000 was also raised during a hockey tournament at the Quincy Youth Arena. Quincy Fire Lieutenant Ralph Blight and Firefighter Tom Bowes were joined by other members of Local 792 and presented a check to the Cure Alzheimer's Fund CEO, Tim Armour. Uh, to date, Quincy Fire Department has raised almost $46,000 for Alzheimer's disease research. It's our check of news for you today. Coming up, we sit down with Richard Ash of the Quincy Pride Committee and learn about this weekend's festival. That's next. Back the month of June traditionally is the uh, celebration of pride for the LGBTQ plus community. And that is the case here in the city of Quincy as well for the past six years. This coming Sunday, the 6th annual Quincy Pride Festival taking place different location this year in Kilroy Square in Quincy Square. The chair of the Pride Committee, Richard Ash, is here to tell us all about that and more. Good to see you, Richard. Good morning, Joe. Good to see you, too. How are you? I'm well. Happy Pride, is, Happy as Pride. the saying goes, yes. right? It's a big kickoff in Boston happened yesterday. Yes. Um, to kick off a month-long event uh, in the city. Yes. But uh, here in Quincy, we're, we're no slouches either, right? No, we're not. We had a kickoff last night as well. Yeah, so flag raising? Yes, last night was the second annual uh, Quincy Pride flag raising that we do in collaboration with the Mayor's LGBTQ Commission and the United First Parish Church. Great. How was it? It was great. Um, we had the Quincy Choral Society do a few songs. Speakers from the commission were Councillor Nina Liang, uh, Jim Batosa, um, uh, and we all gathered after from uh, after the blessing of the flag by Reverend Froome from the United First Parish Church. We all gathered inside. We had big rainbow cake from Fratelli's that I don't know how they made, but it was great, <laughs> and I probably ate too much, um, but it was so. great. It was a good ceremony. Yeah. It was awesome. Nice, nice. The second annual now flag raising, yes, right? Yes, correct. The first happened last year. How did that thought come about to do something um, like that? The commission and the church really, oh, okay. really wanted to get a flag out. Um, they thought it would be a, a nice ceremony, and it was, and yeah. uh, both years have been nicely and well attended. Um, the flag is up all month, of course, so we encourage people to Stop by, see it, take pictures, yep. you know, tag us on social media, the, okay. all those all those small acts um, certainly help increase awareness. Yeah. What does, you know, the pride flag is traditionally the rainbow, the colors of the rainbow, right? What does it symbolize, Richard? What does it represent? Each of the colors on the original pride flag, um, I, I, there are different iterations of the history of it. Um, the stories seem to change depending on what you read. Um, I'm not sure the the completely correct uh, answer to that question, but um, the different colors uh, represent sexuality, passion, art, uh, chemistry, nature. Uh, each color corresponds to um, a different uh, a different word, mm -hmm. if you will, okay. um, that I, I believe it was Harvey Milk um, had ideas for a pride flag, and yeah. each of those colors represents uh, another sentiment or idea of his. County Commissioner in San Francisco that was assassinated, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. Many years ago, yeah. Uh, was that in June? Is that, is that why June is, is known as Pride Month? Uh, that may have been in June as well, I don't okay. know. June is known as Pride Month because of um, the Stonewall Riots oh, of, of course, 1969. Sure. They okay. were June 28th. Okay. And that is why uh, across nationwide 
maybe even worldwide now, but mm. nationwide we we um, consider June Pride Month. Okay. June 28th, 1969, were the Stonewall Riots. And of course, the Stonewall Riots uh, really started a whole movement of different gay activist uh, groups and communities um, and offshoots in communities all over the world, all yeah. over the world and the country, in, especially. Uh, in New York, the Bronx, is it? Was yes. it the Bronx in yep. New York? Yeah. Um, Quincy, as I mentioned, is having its sixth annual I know. Uh, Quincy Pride. Yeah, it's crazy. I know, right? <laughs> um, how did that all come about? How did Quincy Pride come about? Um, I actually joined in 2019. Okay. So I was not part of the inception. Okay. Um, I know uh, Councillor Large Ann Mahoney was a large part of starting the group. Mm -hmm. um, there was a group. Uh, they had a, a, a festival. The, the focus was having a festival, and the focus still is the festival. I mean, right. there's, yep. that's our flagship event, although uh, you know, we'll talk about different offshoots like scholarships and awareness and, and different programming and whatnot. Yes. Um, and they, that group at the time decided the first Sunday of June was a good time to do it. They put on a great event. Every year it's gotten a little bit better. We try to push the envelope uh, a little bit F more further and progress a little more each year mm. um, and the first Sunday of June seems to stick yeah. so there are other prides in the immediate area that are on different weekends right. so I know next weekend is Boston Pride and the weekend after that's Providence Pride then you've got Plymouth and Newport and okay. um, which is why a lot of the questions around whether we can postpone Sunday or have a rain date <laughs> uh, that, that we have great talent booked, yes. but they are also booked for every single minute for the rest of the month of June. Of course, yeah. So the day has just got to go on. And as, uh, as we've been saying, um, if Taylor Swift can do it, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and sixty thousand people, it, and yeah. sixty thousand people can sit in the rain. Then we'll be just fine. Yeah, it doesn't look like a complete washout. No, you know, maybe yeah. spotty showers. It's going to be cool for sure. Yeah, uh, which the performance I, which might I won't, enjoy. Which I won't mind right, because I'll be running people. around. <laughs> we won't yeah. mind that exactly, yeah, because yeah. uh, to have the heat of today uh, would not be fun, right? Uh, for sure, especially for the performers. Too bad it wasn't like the weather of Memorial Day weekend, which was super spectacular. That was perfect. Um, but the the headline is the show will go on. Yes, of on course. Sunday. Okay. Yes. Uh, well, since we brought it up, let's talk about it. It's a new venue this year. Yes, it is. Um, Pageant Field is in the final days of being redone. Yeah, it looks great. Uh, so it, it it does. I've driven by. I haven't gone up, but I I want to wait until next weekend to be to to be surprised, be surprised? So, okay. yes yeah. um, but that being said there was a could we push it and could we do say june 25th i believe is the sunday oh okay but as i said a minute ago is it's i guess it's a good problem to have that there are so many different pride festivals and groups but people know that ours is the first sunday of june and th that's in their calendar right. so we said what do, geez, what do we do now um Kilroy Square seems it, it at first I was hesitant, but it seemed it's going to be great. Mm -hmm. The layout that we have is amazing. We're blocking off General Dunford Drive from Hancock down to the parking uh, area. Okay. The parking garage is free for the day oh. uh, for everybody to park uh, per per the city, which we also appreciate. Um, but it's going to be a nice footprint. We're using um, the inside of the apartment building behind Kilroy Square. I yep. believe it's Nova. We're using the, the gallery in there uh, it's for, enclosed, right? for it's all the vendors. Covered. All the vendors will be there. Um, okay. We've got 30, about 30 LGBTQ vendors wow. uh, or nonprofits. They'll have their booths inside. We'll have tables and chairs uh, for people to enjoy the show. And then there'll be a standing area. It's going to be great. Um, the, the kids' area will be... Um, when, when you block off General Dunford Drive, the street will be all the food trucks and the alcohol trucks. Okay. Um, and also um, sponsors like Stop and Shop and Harbor Health and Manit Health have trucks that they're bringing. So they'll be there on the street and then we'll have all of the kids activities and uh, all of the the slides and bouncy houses in, on the grass. Okay. So it's going to be awesome. All right. Well, the nice thing about blocking off uh, Dunford Drive is really you could park there and just walk because there'll be there'll be no motor right. vehicle traffic to cause any problems. Right. It's pretty much a closed venue at that point. Yep. Where is the actual uh, performances taking place? The stage is going to be right in front of uh, the sign that says Kilroy Square. Okay. So if you're looking at the fours, this if you're looking at the fours and it's on your right, mm -hmm. the stage is in front of you. Okay. So it'll be kitty cornered, so this the show will be visible to both aisles gotcha. of Kilroy Square there. Okay. Yeah. And I'm guessing uh, easy up 
tents just in case? Yes, <laughs> okay. we have. We I, I don't know if anybody can get um, at this point buy a pop-up tent on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> because I think we've bought, bought all? all of them, um, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> and you know what? It's um, the the vendors have tents anyway. The stage has a covering. Okay. Um, we're in New England. We gotta we gotta the show must go on. Exactly. You know we gotta keep it going, and that might add to the experience. Who knows? It's well, I mean, certainly may make it more memorable. But at the same time, as you just said, the rain doesn't look that bad right now. No, so. it doesn't look like a complete washout. Plus, I mean, the, you're much more accessible via public transportation mm -hmm. in Delroy Square. Uh, the free parking, you know, that you mentioned. Plus, just uh, kind of a built-in audience with uh, the big apartment complexes right around you. Right. So folks might not be aware, but see something going on and come on down and, and enjoy the show. And that's the hope. Um, and um, just being there in general. Being more visible mm -hmm. downtown mm -hmm. is huge, yeah. and the the visibility aspect, people that you know just might be walking down Hancock Street and would have never gone up to Pageant Field, exactly. you know, um, and it gets really hot at Pageant too. Certainly. So I'm actually yeah. I'm I'm. I'm, I'm happy now with our yeah. menu change. I'm very happy. And I think people will be very excited and happy as well. Yeah, let's, well yep. let's talk about some of the, uh, the events, the entertainment, the, uh, the featured uh, highlights, if you will, of uh, Quincy Pride. Again, it is Sunday, June 4th, noon to 5 at Kilroy Square. Uh, what's going to be happening? So headlining, we have two headliners. One is Hip Shot Band. Um, they are one of the premier wedding cover funk disco oh, okay. 70s, 80s bands um, in the state. They're amazing. And we also have America's Got Talents, Randy Roberts. He's coming in from Florida, I believe. Oh. Um, and he'll do, a, he'll do a set as well. He does, it's live vocals, it's a full show, it's a share impersonation. I think people will enjoy that too. Fun, okay. And then we've got uh, four or five local drag queens in um, throughout the day okay. as well. All right, I know yep. they always get the, uh, the audience rubbed they up. They certainly <laughs> do. And um, that on top of giving out our community partner award yep. and awarding our scholarships, uh, it's going to be a great. It's going to be a great four, uh, five hours. Five hours, yeah. Five hours. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, let's talk about the uh, the awards and the scholarships yeah. if we can. Um, the scholarships are go the Quincy Public Schools Quincy Pride scholarships. This year, going to two North Quincy seniors, and that's uh, Sean Burns and Mia Pesovich. And they'll uh, we'll, we're excited to bring them on stage and you know present them with their scholarship if they'd like to speak. And you know that some they may they may want to they may not, mm -hmm. but. Um, uh, they're very well deserving and, you know, awesome seniors. The Community Partner Award, I'm going to keep a secret oh. for now. So you'll have to come and see who the Community Partner partner will be. But, okay. Um, right. But the, er, that we did started that last year as well. Last year's was Manit. Oh, um, nice. So last year's was Manit Health, and they were a great first choice. This year's, this year's partner will also be uh, a great organization. Okay. So. What are the, uh, I guess, criteria uh, that you consider to be a community partner? I don't know if we have criteria. Okay. Um, really, it's that year who in the community has done either good work for the LGBTQ, who in the Quincy area has done good work for the LGBTQ community, or good work for us, or helped us in any particular way. Okay. Um, that's really deserving of, of an award and of a shout out. Okay. And is it, do you have a committee uh, yes. on the board to, to determine that? Yep. Okay. Yep. We've got 10 on our... We've got... 10 on our committee, and we've got about five on our board. Okay. So, Are there openings, Richard? There's all, there are always pride openings. There are? Yes. You are always, anyone's always welcome to come to a pride meeting. Um, after the festival wraps this weekend, we, um, we actually have, uh, on June 20th, we have the, the Boston Foundation gave us a, a great grant this year. So we're going to their event um, on June 20th, and then after that, we usually break for a couple months. We reconvene in September, um, and at that point, we welcome anybody who'd like to join us. Okay, all right. Yep. And are there openings on the board at all? Um, there are. We start with the committee, yep. so we, we don't. Our board right now, there's five of us. Okay. Um, the titles vary because we all wear different hats. <laughs> uh, but there, there aren't that. openings on the board. No. Okay. We, we start with the committee, and then if you're doing well on the committee, we'll talk about a board position and whatnot. Okay. Yeah. Um, you mentioned also the city has an LBTQ commission. Yes. Yep. Which I think might be news to some folks. The mayor's commission was established in 2019, I believe. Okay. Um, right now, the commissioners are um, Chris Walker, John McDonald, Nina Liang, and Jim Potosa from the from the church. Mm -hmm. um, and they actually this year, 
approached us um, in the fall and asked for you know if we could do a think tank meeting together really because they want they wanted clear ideas of what they could do for the community which I thought was great um, and the the um, What's come of that is a, a PFLAG chapter for Quincy. Really? Yeah. Okay. And I don't want to spoil any of the news that the commission has, because, but we we've, we've been you, we've all been working together, which is amazing, and I know they're excited about that news, and you know we at Quincy Pride are too. Yeah, that's great to hear. Yep. You're, you're keeping a lot under the under wraps, Serge. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know I w you know if, if the commission wants to come on and talk about that, I want them to do that all too. Right. They've they've been doing good work, and you know we're certainly happy for them, and we love collaborating with them. I will I will reach out to them. And yes. And, and, and offer that yes. for sure. Um, I did want to read um, kind of your mission statement, sure. uh, if you will, because I think it really sums it up nicely as to what, what the Pride Committee mm -hmm. is, is all about. Uh, the mission of Quincy Pride is to promote and foster acceptance, diversity, equity, and inclusion through the annual Q Pride Day Festival, provide advocacy for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, or questioning intersex and asexual or allies of the community. Yes. Um, so, I mean, really, th the word that stuck out to me was acceptance, because you don't often hear that when it, in the DEI world, if you will, you don't hear that word, acceptance. Um, you know, and that's, I think, a key promoting factor. Right. I, I spoke at the flag raising last night, and we've got, in, in, in Quincy right now, it seems we've got a lot of parents, um, you know, trying to facilitate and help their kids uh, adjust to whatever life their kids may want to live, mm. and that's that acceptance. Okay. That re and that's why you know this this P flag chapter I think is amazing. But but also w what I sp spoke on last night is taking a moment to celebrate where you've come from in your journey. So you know as a gay man, where I've come from and how I've come out and all of that. That's kind of that is what you would think of mm -hmm. when you think of. Uh, celebrating Pride Month, mm -hmm. but also there are different people. There, there's people that should, parents that should pat themselves on the back for trying to help their kids. You know, there are, there's allies that should be proud of how they handle themselves and carry themselves and set, f and go forth with the mission of acceptance and inclusion mm -hmm. of the LGBTQ community. Yeah. So it's important for everybody to, to, to whether you're, uh, whatever letter you are in the acronym, yep. it's important for you to take a second in, in June and really understand and remember why it's a month of celebration. Yeah, and uh, you go on uh, on your statements um, to list some values, right? Yep. Um, so advocate, network, and give back mm -hmm. as well. That's an important part of it, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, to give back what the community has given uh, to you and supporting you. Mm -hmm. So do you find that's happening in Quincy? Um, yes, yeah. Uh, we've We've got great support this year, certainly from City Hall and from the Mayor's Office financially and, and in kind and, and help putting on the event. Um, there's always more to do, mm. uh, but I, I do think over the years um, we've, got, we've certainly received a good amount of support that we're grateful for. The state has its uh, first openly gay governor. Yes, um. yes. Is she invited? She is. We're hoping she comes. <laughs> she, uh, we, w we, will, we will clear the schedule whatever time Governor Healy wants to come on stage. Sh she's more than welcome. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, and uh, you yourself are running for local le elective I am. office um, yes. as well. So things have changed a lot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Quincy, yeah. yeah. Uh, for the better. Yes. I think for sure. Uh, I talk agree. a little bit I about the, uh, agree. the family entertainments uh, that um, happen on Sunday. We've got a face painter. We've got um, th two or three uh, characters on stilts and superheroes, which the kids love. I mean, oh, and, yeah. and it, it, that's, the, that's, that's the attraction. You could spend thousands of dollars on headlining entertainment, yep. and these super talented characters come, and the kids go crazy. I think the big kids <laughs> like that, too. Yeah, I, yeah that's true. <laughs> and um, we've got a 60, I, I believe it's a 60-foot obstacle course for the kids wow. is the large one. Um, and I mean, we we had to measure, make sure it was 60 feet. <laughs> okay. With the and we've got a smaller 30 foot one. Uh, there's a big slide. 
uh, as again, face painting, tattoos, photo booth. Uh, the kids from North Quincy High are doing a, uh, a big mural, which Fun. I'm excited to see, which I haven't seen yet. Oh, all right. Uh, okay. So it, it'll, it, it's going to be great. And parents will enjoy the show, uh, take the kids over. It's, it's uh, to where the street's blocked off. Uh, the, the food trucks, actually, the, which I want to touch on, because yep. I know some of the the food trucks in Quincy now are huge draws, yes. which uh, they are for me, certainly. Oh, it's a big but, thing, yeah. Uh, Black's Creek Barbecue, Lobster Love food truck, and um, Gonzalez food truck are the food trucks. All right. And we've got Ellie's Treats and Smiles by the Mile coming for uh, desserts and ice cream and certainly uh, for the kids, too. Fun. Uh, there is a charge obviously for the food trucks uh, yes but everything yeah. else is free right correct everything else is free yeah and the show will go on the rain, show will go on and i know um uh after the show is uh liberty tavern is having a some kind of, uh, like a, a quincy pride after party oh fun okay. so that'll be great too excellent certainly for us that are putting on the on the event but it'll it'll be nice to uh that was kind of what uh, a strength in having a downtown was the hope that the restaurants would yeah. want to participate in the day as a whole yeah um, and I think what I'm forgetting are the the alcohol vendors. Um, and we've got Break Rock Brewing doing um, seltzers, beer, and wine. And we've also got uh, Craig's Cafe doing hard alcohol. Something for everyone. Yes, yes. certainly. Have a great event, Richard. Thank, Thank you so you. much. You're welcome. Thanks, Joe. You're welcome, as always. Time to check the forecast for you for the rest of the day today. Summertime heat with highs in the muggy mid-80s. Look out for storms tonight. Temperatures will drop to the mid-50s. Kind of unsettled, as you can see, over the weekend and right into Monday as well with a chance for showers all three days. Thanks again to Richard Ash for joining us from Quincy Pride. Thanks to our crew. Thank you for watching. Please join us again Monday for another edition of Currently in Quincy. Meantime, head to our website, QATV.com. Org. All our latest programs are there. There's news and information, video on demand, live streaming, and more. For all of us here at QATV, I'm Joe Catalano. Have a great weekend.